okay, so you've got that spark, right? That ambition to really make your mark in the space industry. Mm -hmm. Well, think of this session as uh, your personal strategy briefing. Yeah, like getting the inside track. Exactly. We're diving deep into the success strategies for students entering the space industry. It's from the Space Info Club's 2025 guide. Which is a fantastic resource, by the way. Totally. And listeners can grab it for free. It's at www.spaceinfo.club. Definitely worth checking out. It really is. And what strikes me is how the guide frames these student years. It's not just about hitting the books. No, I called them your launch pad. Precisely. Your initial launch phase. It stresses being proactive now, especially because, let's face it, the space sector is competitive. For sure. The guide is pretty clear. Mm. These years can really set your trajectory. So our mission today... Untacking those key strategies. Right. The actionable stuff, the things that give you a real edge mm. when you're aiming high. So let's jump right in with a big one. Hands-on experience. Ah, uh, yes. The guide basically says theoretical knowledge. Well, it's just not going to cut it on its own. You need more. You really do. Employers in space, they're looking past the grades, you know. They need to see practical skills. Real proof you can apply what you've learned. And the guide lays out some solid ways to get that experience. It does. University research is a key one. Getting involved in those initiatives. And the guide points out these can sometimes even mean collaborating with, like actual space agencies or private companies. Imagine that, getting that kind of exposure while you're still studying. It's huge. Seriously invaluable. And then there are CubeSat programs. The guide really highlights these. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about why those are so valuable. Well, think about it. You get the whole experience. Designing a small satellite, figuring out the system's integration, which is super complex, and even planning the mission itself. Wow. So it's not just theory. Not at all. It's building something that could actually fly. That's powerful. It really is hands-on. And the guide also suggests um, maybe finding a niche. Right. Specializing a bit. It mentions things like astrobiology, studying life in extreme conditions. Fascinating stuff. Or propulsion innovation. Yeah. Like designing ion thrusters. Yeah. Finding your specific area of focus can really make you stand out. Could you just briefly explain what an ion thruster is mm -hmm. for those who might not know? Oh, sure. So basically, it's a type of electric propulsion. It uses electric fields to accelerate ions, no. tiny particles to create thrust. Okay. Now, the thrust is very, very low compared to, say, a chemical rocket. Right. But they are incredibly fuel efficient over long periods, so they're perfect for deep space missions, keeping satellites in the right spot, that kind of thing. Got it. Super efficient for the long haul. So, yeah, having that kind of specific expertise. It sets you apart. And the guide has this killer bonus tip on this whole topic. Oh, yeah. What's that? It says, completed projects serve as tangible evidence of a student's capabilities and commitment. Tangible evidence. That's the key, isn't it? Show. Don't just tell. Exactly. It's about demonstrating what you can do. Which leads nicely into the next point from the guide competitions. Right. Student competitions. Maybe sounds like just another activity, but the guide positions them really strategically. How so? Well, think about it. These competitions often mimic real industry challenges. Okay, like a simulation. Pretty much. Okay. They push you to be creative, prove you know your stuff, solve tricky problems, often under tight deadlines, just like the real world. Makes sense. The guide mentions some specific ones, right? Yeah, like NASA's student launch program that's designing, building, and launching actual high-powered rockets. Wow, talk about pressure. Definitely a real test. And then you have things like CANSAT or rover competitions. What do those involve? They're more focused engineering challenges, yeah. usually with specific constraints, budget, weight, functionality. You have to work within those limits. Forces you to be clever. Absolutely. Creative thinking, strategic planning. But it's not just the tech skills, is it? No, the guide points out other crucial things you develop. Like project management. Yeah. Exactly. And teamwork, collaboration, communicating your ideas clearly. Which, in the space field, being so multidisciplinary, engineers, scientists, managers, all working together, hmm. those soft skills are just vital. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Internships. The guide really flags these as super important. Mm -hmm. And not just as a line on your CV. It calls them mini careers. I like that framing, mini careers. What do you gain from that perspective? Well, the guy breaks it down. You get exposed to actual workflows, how things really get done day to day. The nitty gritty. Yeah, the tools, the software, the technologies they're actually using, and importantly, the company or agency culture, how people interact, the pace. That's often overlooked, but so key. 
and networking, obviously. Oh, huge. The guide stresses the connections you make. They can genuinely open doors later. Right. Plus, it's a great way to sort of test drive different career paths within space, isn't it? See what clicks. Definitely. Exploring different roles. The guide mentions summer gigs at agencies, co-op programs with satellite companies. Right. These can be direct stepping stones. They sound great, but let's be real. Landing one can feel tough for students. Any tips from the guide on actually getting that internship? It's a fair point. The guide doesn't give a magic formula, but it implies a few things. First, all that hands-on stuff we talked about. Projects, competitions. Makes your application stronger. Exactly. It shows you've already got some practical skills. Second, networking helps, even online or at events. Getting your name out there. Makes sense. And third, tailoring your application. Don't just send the same generic thing everywhere. Show you've researched that specific role, that company, and how your skills fit their needs. Good advice. Don't be generic. Okay, what about design teams? The guide highlights those too. Yeah, university design teams. The ones building rockets, rovers, maybe weather balloons. Sounds like fun, but also a lot of work. It is, but connected back to the industry, the guide says these teams simulate the real demands of space missions. How so? Think about it. You need interdisciplinary collaboration, engineers, maybe computer science students, physics majors, yeah. all working together. Right, like a real mission team. Exactly. Plus, you're dealing with constraints, budgets, timelines, and you have to go through that whole cycle of iterative design, building, testing, fixing. from failures. Crucial. The guide even jokes it's like your future job, just, you know, maybe the cafeteria food is better later. Uh, let's hope so. Let's hope it drives so. home that it's practical, low-stakes practice for the real deal. Mm -hmm. Then the guide moves on to maker spaces and hackathons. Okay, these feel a bit different, more dynamic maybe. Yeah, the guide calls them environments for rabid innovation. Fast learning, getting your hands dirty quickly. What's the appeal there? Access to tools, for one. Rapid prototyping stuff like 3D printers, CNC machines. You can turn ideas into physical things fast. Quick iteration. Exactly, and you're often tackling real world problems, usually under pressure, like in a hackathon. Great skill building. And the networking aspect again. Definitely. The guide emphasizes connecting with peers who share your interests, but also finding mentors, people from industry who might be hanging out or judging. Getting their insights is gold. Invaluable. Okay, this next one feels really important. Independent projects. Ah, yes. Showing initiative. Going beyond the required coursework or team stuff. Doing something on your own. And this is where your personal passion can really shine, right? The guide gives some cool examples. Of what? Like maybe coding a satellite simulator in Python or building a model rocket, but really documenting the whole process, the physics, the tests. Or contributing to open source space software. Yeah, finding a project online and adding value. Lots of options. But then there's the crucial next step the guide mentions. Showing it off. Right. Don't just do it. Make sure people can see it. Exactly. Use platforms like GitHub for code, LinkedIn to talk about your projects, maybe even build a simple personal website. It's your portfolio. Where recruiters or potential collaborators can actually see your drive and your skills. It makes such a difference. It's and proof. It shows you're proactive. Totally. Okay. Finally, the guide offers some pro tips to tie all this together. Maximize the impact. Mm -hmm. First up, mentors. Find mentors. Seek them out. People already in the field. Absolutely. Their feedback, their guidance, their perspective. It can be transformative. They've been there. They can help you navigate. Maybe even open doors you didn't know existed. For sure. The second pro tip. Document everything. Build that portfolio. Yeah, not just the successes, right? <laughs> Note down what worked, what didn't work, and crucially, what you learned from it all. Shows growth resilience. It really does. It's a much richer story than just a list on a resume. It's your journey. And last pro tip from the guide. It's a big one. Ah, uh, balance. Yes, don't let all this amazing hands-on work tank your grades. It's so important. You need that solid academic foundation, too. It all works together. Finding that sweet spot is key. Definitely. So wrapping up this deep dive into the Space Info Club's guide, mm. a big takeaway for me is just how dynamic the space industry is. It's always changing. Absolutely. And the really empowering message from the guide, I think, is that if you start early, stay curious, put in the work. You can make a real contribution. Yeah, a significant one. Whether you're into engineering or business or science communication, there's a place for dedicated people. Totally. So whether you dream of designing spacecraft, planning missions, creating new tech, or even sharing the amazing story of space, the key message is clear. 
Start now. Get involved. Start building. Start launching. Start designing. Start communicating. Just begin. Which brings us to maybe a, a final thought for everyone listening. You all have unique skills, different passions. Mm. So take a moment. Think about the vastness of space, all the challenges, all the opportunities. What specific problem out there, what question really grabs you? What are you most passionate about trying to solve in the cosmos?